What's up guys? This is Tommy from Camelot and you're watching KL's Xena. Rock on. It's quite late actually. It was uh, I think it was uh, maybe when I was 15, 16. Uh, I got introduced to a friend in uh, high school. Uh, I think it's called high school and when you're 15, 16 you get to, we call it gym, gymnasium basically. But I went um, together with a guy called Johan and uh, he was just a prolific guitar player. He already wrote his songs and I remember seeing him the very first time. I didn't know anything about metal music. I just came from pop and Michael Jackson and, and the heaviest maybe Queen and stuff like that. But I saw him play his guitar he played the final countdown solo behind his behind his uh, head basically uh, in the in the in the auditorium of the school and I was like blown away I was like that's freaking cool uh, so yeah I befriended him and we you know we started making music together and I he inspired me to pick down the guitar from the from the wall that we had we had a nylon string at the time um, learned a few chords just to start making music and I, I and it wasn't intentionally you know in the beginning it wasn't to, to sing there was more to make songs and and make music so i just had to use my voice to tell the story and then that's kind of how i started singing but uh yeah so it was him that introduced me to and i think the first thing i heard it was really really weird mix but first things i heard was uh sonata arctica ecliptica uh, that album just blew me away, right? Uh, and then, and coming from pop, all these melodies, but in a heavier format, like with a great singer, and I was just blown away. Was the melodies, and also there was nothing to you, you couldn't find out any anything about them at the time. They were just from Kemi in the northern Finland, and there was nothing you could know. You know, they were just living there, making this magical music. So it was pretty weird. Um, but then. Uh, Dream Theater, uh, scenes from a memory was was also one of the things, first things I heard. Really weird uh, to listen to that. The first thing you do, you know, it's nothing with a f straight four four beat. <laughs> it's just, and then um, I think in Flames uh, too. I think it was just uh, some bits and pieces of music, and I was just like, wow, if this is music, if this is metal, I think I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, I wanted to write songs in Swedish primarily first, and then I just... But prior to that, I was I would already, already singing in the school choir, so I guess music was always, always something I did or something I loved. Not necessarily thinking of myself as a singer or anything, but just I like to act and like to, to you know, be a part of some something with music, but I played the trombone. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go so well, but... Uh, yeah, so that that's kind of how it started, I think. And then I started making songs with this Johan, uh, my friend friend of mine, and and then he showed me the metal, and I had a, a recording studio, like a, a portable one, that we made music on, and I just made like a cover of, I think it was Mary Lou from Sonata Arctica, and uh, I sent it to my friend, and he was like, "What? Well, you can how how can you just sing like this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know, I just." I guess I just drove around in my car at home and sang. So that's kind of that started, and uh, and then I got to, yeah, uh, through him again, record for a, a metal project with a guy called Stefan uh, uh, Lindholm. So yeah, I, I don't know. I just started, kind of, uh, opportunities opened up when I started and and. Ended up in Seventh Wonder, and then I ended up in Camelot. So it's nothing really I, I was looking for. It was just more happening. Yeah, I, I guess that's how you start, right? You you take whatever pieces of stuff that you like from people. Maybe not just one. Maybe I liked how Mar I liked how Michael Jackson sang very percussive. I like how uh, like the the vocal divas of with like Mariah Carey and how they did runs and I liked how Jorn Lande had grit 
and uh, Tony Kakos melodies. So it's like uh, it, it just mixed up until to you, you find your own personality, I think. I, I got asked to join or to audition for Seventh Wonder in 2004 or something, or 2005, and they already found, or, uh, they already had a, a, an album out, so they, so I joined and sang on the release party of that album. That's what it was. So I, I never, you know, did covers or anything. I just stepped into the band and pl started playing the songs that they had already released, and then we started working on new songs, and that's kind of how that unfolded. I don't think I've found it yet. <laughs> a lifetime, I think. Now, I, I, to be honest and to be quite, quite frank, it's I, I regret that I haven't started. Uh, I didn't start earlier, exploring all the correct techniques and and stuff because it's really helpful. It's really helpful, and, and it doesn't change the way you yeah, your personality of your voice. I was afraid. Of, I think I was a little bit afraid of that. Also, very shy as a person. I don't really want anyone to to hear me when I'm failing, right? So it's, it's just a bad combination, I think. And now I'm, I'm trying to explore more the aspects of the techniques and how to save your voice, and which is hard to do when you already have like an established way of singing. It's like, it's even harder to go back and re reshape and, and retrain your voice to do the right things. I think many things I do naturally right, but there's certain things I definitely struggle with. So I, I, I I'm looking forward to the next like chapter of my vocal journey as uh, more more information and more um, tr training, so to speak, proper training. Mm, the first the first recordings I did, uh, the first there wasn't a metal recording, but there was my 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 in Swedish kind of singer songwriter. But I was laying on the bed, I was like singing, laying, laying on the bed singing like this. Um, but uh, other than that, when I started, we, we, the first project I did with that Stefan Lindholm guy, he, uh, we built a little booth in a, in a closet. We put up a bunch of covers and stuff in the, in the closet, right? And then we just sang until there was no, there was no like way back then to to correct pitch or anything. Uh, if you had a great take, you just had to sing it again. Uh, at least we didn't have that because we we just had so I just had to sing until I I thought it was good you know and it was uh, that was probably a good training I think um, nowadays if you have I mean it's not saying that everyone's using or I'm using it all the time but you can if you have a really great take emotionally a great take you can if if you hear that it might benefit from a little bit of a touch you can you can put in the right place so that the emotion is there because and if I can't if I can't do that I will use it anyway because sometimes the magic is in how you deliver it more than in the note so I think uh, but back then there was nothing nothing we could do or <laughs> at least us so we we just like yeah I have to sing it again that's not the third note there is a little flat you know so a good training I think First tour I ever did. It was tough because it, it was good in, in a way because we opened up for Nightwish, uh, the first uh, real tour we did in, in the States. A really good tour, uh, shorter set, so 45 minutes or something like that. So that was good. But I remember us, like Nightwish had three shows, one day off, three shows, and we like ah we're gonna also play on the on the off day. Uh, so it was like seven shows and oh my god I, I'm, I'm so happy i was young back then or younger um because that, that wouldn't fly today i would just say no we can't do that yeah that was it was too much but and if you get sick too you need those you need those rest days kind of yeah it was tough it was tough but we got through it and had a good time yeah i would say the transition between Waiting in the Wings, which is uh, my first with Seventh Wonder, to the second album, which was Mercy Falls. I think that's where my, that I had more room to do exactly what I wanted to do. 
and try to use my voice in, in ways I hadn't on the on the previous album. So I think that's what it was. And then I took a, yet another step towards fine-tuning it on the next album, which was uh, Great Escape. Um, but and now I feel like I've I've come to my own right with Camelot in this new album because it's more it's it's more of a free expression of my my different sizes as a vocalist I think. I don't I, I don't even know if I'm a tenor. Maybe I'm just like I don't know if I'm in between the baritone and a tenor either. But yeah, tough. I mean, uh, you have to explore different things with your voice, see what you can do, right? Naturally, you won't be able to do maybe everything exactly like the other person, but it's also maybe the beauty of it, like bringing your own stuff into it, changing little things that fit you better. And it, it definitely grew me as a vocalist, I think. Also writing for different projects, like trying to figure out what was the essence of Camelot and try to make something like that was also very, um, it's a huge learning experience. And, and I think it expands you as a, as a musician. Yeah, I mean, the way I have trained most of my life is at lifting weights and, and do stuff like that. Uh, maybe not beneficial so much. More beneficial, like do cardio, which I also try to do, but cardio stuff is more beneficial for your lungs and diaphragm and, and stuff like that. L lifting can actually make you tighter, like it can make, make your it, um, everything around your voice a little tight. So I remember I had a vocal injury once and I was, they told me you can't lift weights for two weeks or whatever. Because it's, you, when you lift heavy weights, you, you kind of close your vocal fold to keep the pressure. And then you put a lot of vocal pressure, or vo air pressure on your vocal folds, kind of like screaming. So, Many people get hoarse after working out, or I, I'm one of those people, if I, if I really go for it. So it can be really bad for you. So, but if you do it in moderation, if you don't lift too heavy, if you, if you just move around your body and lift some weights, that's fine. Yeah. Mm, not like I'm going to do this more or this more. I just, I just thought, you know, while making the songs and stuff, that we wanted to get back to some of the older style songs, you know, like um, maybe from the era of Karma or something like that, that people really, you know, appreciate live and, and that we like to play. So we, we just, we just uh, consciously wanted to bring more of those melodies in, which also made it a little bit different approach in the singing, like a little more melodic uh, as opposed to the last album, for example. So. I think we brought back the melodies on this on this album, and then I kind of had to, you know, I could sing more freely and more elaborate around it. Maybe some higher pitch things too. No, I do, I do have a routine, yeah, and it's different for every tour. It depends on how I prepare before the tour. You see, find different new things, and um, this tour, uh, I have a YouTube video I'm watching and I'm just following along to the steps. And it seems to, seems to be okay for this tour. And then, remember that last tour I had something different. And, uh, but I do use the straw, the phonation thing where I'm blowing into water. I use that uh, very consistently. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I did a, a food panel test to see what I'm sensitive to. And I'm very sensitive to eggs, very sensitive to dairy, so anything milk and butter um, related, and also gluten. So I have to, it's, it's basically meat or, or uh, protein with salads or rice, potatoes, something like that. <laughs> I don't think, nothing, nothing but support, uh, to be honest. Uh, I've never heard a word about anything, but they've just been supportive. Yeah, I, I would I would say, don't be afraid to explore work, vocal techniques and go to maybe different teachers too. Uh, I, I I wish I've done that because it would have saved a lot of headache and a lot of um, <laughs> voice ache too. 
So I, I would say ed educate yourself properly around your own voice and see what works for you. And But then just keep on, keep on doing it and be professional. Don't drink too much alcohol and uh, you'll be fine.